Hello, how are you? This is Jilly Bling. I have something a little bit different. These are note cards, considerably smaller than the cards we normally work with. And in the Stampin' Up! Um, annual catalog, they sell white. I happen to have some of these in vanilla, and I thought it would be perfect to use it with this designer paper because the designer paper, very interesting, it could go with a white card base or vanilla. So when you look at that card, I think it's kind of pretty, but if you look up close, the um, perimeter around the little die cut pieces, those are white. If you were to look at the paper, well, this one is all white, but many of the sheets, it's kind of a mix in between white and vanilla, which is convenient for the things we do. For instance, this paper right here, if you look at it close, I see areas of white and areas of vanilla, so it goes with either paper. Same with this one. This one is a little bit easier to see. If you have this paper at home, when you look at it, you'll be like, oh, it's kind of stained with yellow, but that's just kind of a vanilla color. And same with this one, but it's nice that it's so versatile and flexible. So I'm gonna do five projects just because the note cards and envelopes, um, they come in a package of 10. So 10 note cards and envelopes. Um, so it says item count is 20, but that's for the cards and the envelopes. So I'm trying to make them, because you know how I could go overboard. I'm trying to make them easy to hand out, easy to mail, easy to make. So no ribbon on the front. I did just now. The glue is still a little wet. I put a little ribbon there just to kind of finish off the bell. All of this is using the designer paper cut out for the images. And I stamped this in Versamark and stamped this in Shaded Spruce and then just assembled it. So I'm going to do five different ones. This is the first one. So let's get started. Oh, and then the envelopes. Um, because I have so much paper, I just thought, let me see how big that piece is. This is two by, hold on, I have it written down somewhere. Two by five and a quarter, and it perfectly fit on here, so I'm gonna decorate off the of envelopes too, which is just a nice coordination of product. Okay, so we'll be using Golden Greenery Bundle, and also Spotlight on Nature, the circles, and that is for the greeting. We'll also be using Bloomin' Pearls, and these pearls, I always love the pink. I use the gold all the time, but these, I always just kind of like neglect them, and I don't use them. But look how nice they look on this card. I think they go great with the shaded spruce, and you can use the greener shade or the bluer shade. Both of them look awesome. So here is what the note card looks like. And over here I have the paper ready to go for the envelope. And on page 17 in the catalog, right here, number eight, basic white note card and envelope, 10 of them, or $10. And that is for 10 note cards and 10 envelopes. Very convenient, very easy. I have no room over here. <clears throat> okay, so let's get started on this. Very vanilla, and it is already scored, which makes it convenient for folding. Okay. And then I cut a piece of shaded spruce and very vanilla for the inside. And in the video description, are the paper cut sizes for all of these, all five different designs, two of each. Oops. So let's just do this. I'm thinking about it. I'm gonna put glue onto the envelope flap. I was using um, the six by six beautiful autumn paper. I think it's like Splendid Autumn is the name of it. It's in the holiday mini catalog and um, on the card front I used two pieces that were just a little bit short of two inches each so because it's six by six paper I had 
a remaining piece a little bit over two inches. And I put it on the back of the envelope and it's like, that just makes all the difference. It just, it looks very nice, very finished and professional. So I'm gonna let this dry just a little bit and then I'll trim this off. We'll do that, just a minute. So for the card front, this when you look at it, I'm gonna use some um, vellum that has gold little speckles on it. Where's that? Nope, that's not it. Oh, I have stuff everywhere. Well, this is what it looks like. I'll put it in the video description. Um, it'll have a link that will show all the products used, but this is what it looks like. And I'm going to use this and the big die and cut out two of them. When I did the sample, I cut out the whole the whole die piece. And then when I was assembling it, I ended up cutting off the whole stem. So to be frugal, you just need about that much. Then the designer paper. So that's what's on top is the vellum with the gold on it. And then these little branches. That's from the designer paper. Okay, so when you get your package of designer paper, there's two sheets of the page that has the bells on it and two sheets of just the greenery with no bells on it. When you flip them over, distinctly different, it's either plaid or striped. Striped, when you have the bundle, there's dies to cut out every single item. That is wonderful. The plaid piece, on the other hand, you could cut out any of the single bells. So the single small or the single big, but you have to fussy cut everything else on this page. But it's still beautiful. So to pick out four pieces of greenery, on the sample, I picked out four of the biggest, most beautiful pieces, like this here. And to get them to tuck into a smaller card, I ended up using pretty much just the tips of it. And all of this is underneath the shaded spruce circle. Therefore, I'm going to be a little bit smarter this time. And see how just this little um, edge piece is cut out? Because that's all that you really see. So I'm going to be smarter this time. And I'll show you what I mean here in just a minute. This piece that has the start of the branch, that's not going to do us any good. If it was just the tip of the branch, <coughs> excuse me, that would be good. Hold on, tickle. Just to make sure no tickles come. So it's getting to be cold out and I dressed up in one of my fluffy, like super warm and thick shirts, sweatshirts. Feels wonderful. Probably doesn't look good at all, but it feels really nice and warm. So here are the gold vellum pieces already cut out, ready to roll. And I could pull that one out, I just tore it, and I know that it's gonna be underneath the shaded spruce circle, so I'm not too worried that there's half of that piece in there. Um, here is the die cut circle. We're gonna stamp on here. Okay, here we go. Here's the pieces. Like, oh, okay. This one was cut out with the die. Are you like, what, what's that all about? <laughs> I'll show you in a minute. So if I flip these over, this one is die cut and it has a flat top, but I'm thinking maybe I could kind of attach it because the vellum 
is covering a lot of the die cut pieces, I could get away with a whole lot. You probably didn't even notice that this was the edge of the paper, like right here. And there's a big old flat spot on there. Probably didn't notice, huh? So you could use a lot of the pieces. Oh, this one has another flat spot. But once again, I could try to piece it together or with my scissors, my snips, maybe I can make it look realistic. These pieces are, because it's plaid, these are fussy cut. I have one more to go. This little one, perfect size. But I think there's only two of them per sheet. And that wouldn't get us very far. So, just a little bit of fussy cutting. It's okay. Especially when you're doing only two of these. On some of those die cut pieces that have the flat top, I'm gonna to have to try to make it look realistic. Cutting. Okay, so let's come back to these die cut pieces in just a minute. How about if we work on the words? Right here. So, because I'm going to emboss it, I'll use my embossing buddy from the Essentials Toolkit, Heat Embossing Toolkit. I love that thing. Oh, I could pull out my little um, tweezer pincher things. Just want to heat it. Use those. Um, we'll use spruce for the inside. Right now we'll use Versamark. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Oh, and this stamp set is, I've used the heck out of this thing. Greetings of the season. It's right here, the one we're using. These words are so elegant, so nice. Good set to have. So much I just bought a second one. Okay, so I'll get this stamped on here. Okay. and put it into the powder. Came out pretty good. The first one I had to use my, um, my little brush. Oh, that's in the um, essentials kit. I had to use this. This one is looking pretty good, just to brush off any little pieces. And then there were some little freckles, little dots that were just too close. And you all probably already know this and already do it, but I tried something new and I love it, which is, if I hold this up, you could probably find all the little spots, is my take your pick tool. Make sure there's some go in there. But wherever I saw a spot, I just picked it up with this. And it, it just stuck to it. And yeah, I'll have to <laughs> refresh the tip of it. But I'm all about getting a nice, clean, embossed little circle. Okay. There it is. Okay, let's just start building the front. Another thing is, this is white embossing powder and I'm working with vanilla, but you probably you probably weren't critiquing me too much on this one. Somehow it works. Oh, I didn't use my, my thingies. Here, I'll use it to place it. Yeah, just because I can. Okay. And at this point, one dimensional. You're like, what? 
It's crazy. Okay, tools, you are good. So I'm gonna put this right in the middle, straight up and down. Okay, and I'm going to lay out the greenery just because it kind of matters. Oh, I definitely, I was gonna put it up here, but ooh, that accentuates the flat top. So you don't even see it. You kind of see down here, that little bit. But if I kind of round it out, maybe it won't be so obvious that it has a flat top. So you don't even see that one. This one is cut off there, but that's okay. I'm trying to get them out to the edge so at least you could see some of it. Oh, but you know what? I should keep a really good one for the inside because you see all of that. Or maybe a little older one because this one is kind of big. Oh, that's kind of cute, huh? Okay. Oh, but this is perfect. This one must be cut from the middle of the paper. That's just like this one. Okay, we'll do that. This one, in off its perfectness, will go right there. Oh, and then I have this piece. Let's see. Okay, that really doesn't go, but... If I keep trying, it might go. Um, so right there, it's kind of working. I know. I'll leave the core of it, and I'm just, I'm just kind of winging it. Do you do that when there's designer paper? Do you try to match up this side with that side? They're perfect halves, so you can make a hole, and then like over embellish it. See, that's going to work, especially if I could get the um, the vellum to cover it. Okay, I'm just going to go with it. There, just like that. And I think the vellum, the vellum covers a lot. Okay, dry. Doesn't look the best, but it's okay. Okay, that. Okay, if I'm going to use this one. But I want to make sure to get the, um, the vellum. It's like I'm covering up all of that beautifulness. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe right here. Because I'm looking at the tip, making sure it's on the card. Okay, that looks good. And then here is my vellum piece that I didn't die cut the stem. But if this one goes here, but tucked underneath. Now you know why there's just one dimensional on there, huh? Okay, so that could go there. And this one, this one needs to strategically be placed over my, now, oh. Let's try something else. Okay, this one could be, see, that's it. That one could be up there. It's covering up my seam. And then this one could be leaning down this way and filling in the void there. Okay, that's it. So to put it in, I will just do one at a time. Here, block. Sit on the dimensional in there so I can pull out these pieces. Oh, that works good. And a little bit of glue here. And a dimensional on the end. And tuck it in so we can see the beautiful green, beautiful paper. Dimensional glue. Or good. This one looks easy. Maximum greenery showing. Okay, we're there. 
This one is pretty much hiding. Oh, and look how perfect this. Oh no, it has a flat top, but you don't even see it. <laughs> <clears throat> Does that drive you crazy knowing that under there there's imperfection? Or does it bring you joy like, yeah, I did good. Okay, so the flat top is right there, but the vellum covers it. Okay, just one more. My bridge together piece. Oh, and it's even different papers. Well. I had one person Hopefully not any more, any additional people than just the one who, um, if there was layers on the front, say that there was a layer of shaded spruce on the front of the card, I would say, oh, just take your circle out of there because you're not going to write on it so you won't feel the lumps. And just take the circle out of there, but make sure to use the whole one down here. She goes, I, 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 I can't do that. She goes, I know there's a gap under there. I'm like, I know, but you won't see it. She goes, so you won't give me another paper? And I'm like, well, sure, sure I will. And I pulled one from a different kit, but it just, it, it's just something she doesn't do. And I understand people have things like that. I'm sure I have some things like that, but I didn't know you would with paper. Okay, here's a little piece that come out. Okay, so I'm going to put glue under this bottom part of it. And usually when you're trying to attach vellum to anything, it's a challenge. Because you could see whatever adhesive you use, any and all of them, except supposedly they have um, vellum tape. Like a tape runner type thing. But I think you could still kind of see it. Oh, I have to make sure to cover up my, my seam. There it is. Um... But it's always a challenge when you do that. But if you put glue on the vellum, where the vellum's gonna be tucked underneath, you won't see it. And I kinda like how this is popping up. I'm gonna stick down these a little bit more, but I think it makes it look a little 3D. It's like the greenery is coming off the, the card front to greet you. This one goes midpoint and down this direction, filling in this vanilla gap. Okay, so that is it for, I'm going to stick down the vellum a little bit more in just a minute, but we know that there's only one <clears throat> dimensional. Okay, that would drive me crazy. Knowing that there's only one, it's like, no, you're too skimpy. You need like at least four, but we're going to do five. So I'll take another dimensional. And put it right here. I'll put on four more. And you know, I was thinking about it. Small dimensionals versus regular size ones. I'm always just thinking, oh, the, the regular size ones, those stick better because there's more surface. But I, I, you know, I don't know that they do. Like if you had just a small dimensional, you put it under here. It holds really well. And then you can have, because you get double the amount in a small package, if you use just small dimensionals, you, you could be a, a bargain stamper. Okay. There's that. This is for the inside. So I'm going to do just a little bit more glue underneath some of these, because some of these are really popping up. Let me see. I see just a little piece in here. And if I punch it out, there it is. Um, it's just going to make the card better, right? There's that much more detail. It might pop up, but as I work around, I'll come back and I'll stick these down again. I think I'm doing mostly the stem, not so much the leaves. Because I do like that a, a little bit popping up look. So 
So tomorrow, Tony's sister, Kathy, said, hey, and she always wants to go to craft shows. And I, I like them. Um, I like them somewhat. But she wants to go to every one. Every one within like a 200 mile radius. That's a lot of craft shows. That's a whole lot of being tempted to buy stuff. And I don't need stuff. I certainly don't need any craft stuff. Stampin' Up! catalog has it all. And so, it's Tony's sister. I said, Tony, you need to come with, too. He's like, I do. <laughs> so we're going to go out for breakfast. So Kathy and David, Tony and I, we're going to go out for breakfast. And then we're going to go to craft show. It'll be a fun day. Okay, so some of these are kind of popping up a little bit. It's, it's like it's moving. You see that moving? It's the um, glue on the vellum. Can you see it? Maybe if it keeps going, it's going to go into the spruce and you can see it. That's kind of weird. It's like it's moving. I'm looking for something dark colored to put underneath it. See if it'll do it again. Okay, there's that. Okay, stick down. Okay, now watch, watch, see if, see if you can see it move. This is like a science experiment. Oh, and now the glue is dried where you can't see it. It's not moving anymore. Well, if you're sticking down glue, um, vellum with glue and yours does that, send me a comment say, mine did too. Okay, bling. Bling. The first one I used, the greener. This time I want to use the one that's a little bit bluer for... Oh, that looks really pretty together. Can I do just three? I'm trying to not over embellish. So, it's easy to mail. But my mind says I need to put a ribbon on it. I need to dimensional everything. Pretty. Look how nice that goes. Who knew? Okay. And for the inside, I'm going to stamp the words. Let me lay these pieces out first. Right there. And shaded spruce, I'm going to stamp seasons greetings. Then we can assemble that, trim the envelope, and that's it. See, if I wasn't doing so much talking, this probably would have gone a lot faster. And especially if you're doing two of them, you could kind of assembly line it. I have little dots on my paper. It's like it's in the paper. Let me try a few ones while I get that. Hmm. Well, that side is pretty. Redo. Seasons greetings. Oh, perfect. Okay. <clears throat> so to assemble it, yeah, for someone who says that I'm trying to keep it simple, I'm putting a dimensional on the inside. <sighs> yeah. Can't help it. Glue, dimensional. And this one, there's a little hole in the, um, the die, cuts out the little hole. I'm gonna have that go right over the branch. So, glue and dimensional. If I have one dimensional in there, that means I could do however many. Because it's already popped up. It's already thicker than it should. And this one could be off to the side, dangling a little bit. Might be too far, because I've got that space. I should do it quick, just in case I need to pull it up, because it won't fit into the, um, the envelope. It's very 
very cute, very sweet, very simple. Oh, that's gonna work just fine. It might be a little bit big, but I know envelopes come with a little bit of extra um, space. Because if it was the same exact size, you wouldn't be able to get it in there. Oh, I didn't center this. Okay, don't tell anyone. My vanilla is not square on the shaded spruce. Down at the bottom, it's a little bit too narrow. Don't tell anyone. I'll just have to write an extra special message in here. See, that's hanging over just a little, but I think that's what the, um, the envelope extra space provides. Just a knot. This is twisted gold. I just search it by saying twisted gold. Um, it's going to be in the next mini catalog starting in January. And I've ordered a few spools of it and I really like it. Just because it, it frays just a little bit, but not too much. Okay, I'm going to let that sit there. After it dries, I'm going to trim up the ends so they're a little bit smaller, like that. And now, this is done. Almost. Put it right there. Let's trim up this, and then that's it. I'm hoping the other ones will be, not that this was a hard, but I have a tendency to overdo it. A little less overdued. Over embellished. But you know what, using embellishments, it makes me happy. So, so far these are okay. And could you imagine having all 10 of them, putting a bow around them? What a nice gift. Okay, so there's that. I'm gonna mess with the one that's already dry. Okay, two of them are done. There's gonna be eight more to go. Isn't that nice? Okay, this is card number one. So, thank you for watching. Hope you have a great day. Until next time, bye.